Hey everybody, I hope you're doing great. It's the Pokemon player today, and we are looking at Vespaquin Zorark. Now, I really like Vespaquin. It's a, it's a powerful Pokemon. It's got a lot of potential, and um, so for those of you who do not are not familiar with the concept, he does 20 damage plus 10 for every Pokemon in your discard pile, and he does that for just a DCE. So what's great about this Pokemon is stage 1, 1 energy attachment. That's really easy to take out, and if you put enough effort into it, you can actually make his attack be really powerful. Um, if you think about it, just being able to 2-shot EXs already makes it... Um, worth it. I mean, it can fight against EXs if it, since it only gives up one prize, but like it can go all the way up to one-shotting EXs, and that's when you really take advantage. So, um, Vespaquin is just a really powerful Pokemon. The only question is, what do you pair it with? And this is one of the common pairs um, people do with Vespaquin, and this is Zorark. So, we are going to be looking at the deck list. So, of course, we're running four for Vespaquin. We need as many as we can. This, these are our main attackers. And, um, then we are running, actually, for Unknown. Now, Unknown, um, as soon as you play him onto your bench, you can put him straight into the discard pile, and, um, so it's just, boom, one new Pokemon in your, um, discard pile, and you get to draw a card, so he just immediately transforms, um, himself into a new Pokemon, into a new card, and gets a new Pokemon to the discard pile, perfect card here, and we're running for him. Then another support that's often run with Vespaquin is Klefki. Um, Klefki isn't quite as good as Unknown, you attach him as a tool, and he gives you immunity against Megas, which generally we don't really care about, nobody's really playing Megas anymore, gives you a real edge if you are playing against Megas, but generally we're just gonna, um, put him on and wait a turn, because at the end of one turn, he gets automatically discarded, so easy Pokemon to discard, you play him, you attach him, and, uh, one turn later, off he goes. Then we are playing Zoroark, that's kind of what we're pairing with, uh, here, and, you know, the thing with Vespicorn is, as long as you're playing a Pokemon that can attack with double colorless energy, there's synergy, you know, and um, in this case, Zoroark, well, it's a powerful Pokemon, and even if you're not going to use it, more Pokemon to put in the discard pile, always good. Running a 2-2 line, and Zoroark, um, we're using him mostly for his attack, double colorless energy, as I said, you can use it with Vespaquin's um, energies, and he does 30 more damage for every Pokemon in your opponent's bench. For I said more because he does 10 base. Um, that is, when he has a full bench, 160 damage, you can add to that choice band, um, it's it's just really a good it's it's a really good card and can really help you out and it's also stage one so we can also use evolutions which we're going to be talking about in a second. It's also got this ability um, stand in allows you to go straight to the um, active and what's great about this ability is that if you combine it with floatstone which we're running two of you're going to see in a second you can make him stand in and retreat um, because stand in isn't considered retreating it's considered you know the action of the ability and put anyone you want active so that um, having the Zorark with a floatstone on is always a a cool thing to have. And so they can't Lysander up a Tauros or something just to stall you. You'll just Zorak, and then you can attack with Zorak or retreat back into your Vespaquin. But also his attack's great, so just a great Pokemon overall. Um, and that's who we're running here. Then, we still need more Pokemons. We need, even if we're not necessarily planning on using them as attackers, we need bulk Pokemons to put later on in the discard pile. We're running one Tauros GX. Um, he attacks with for double colorless energy once again. He's a GX Pokemon. Um... And, you know, Taurus Jax is kind of a hard person, uh, Pokemon to attack into. If your opponent's running anything that just cannot one-shot a Taurus GX, well, you know, you're really good because if he can't one-shot it, he he's gonna have some trouble. And, um, it also allows us to use our GX attack because, we, you know, we do have the privilege to use our GX attack once during the game, so running that one GX Pokemon allows us to do that. Um, then we're running two Shamans because Shaman is draw support. I mean, you're supposed to know Shaman. Makes you, makes you draw until you have six cards in your hand. Can count as, can basically be your second supporter for the turn. I'm not gonna explain it too much. And then running Evolutions. Um, some of you might not know about these. They, they're about to rotate, but each uh, of the three, there's only three of them, allow all the stage ones to be their, um, their type. So, Flareon allows you to be a fire type, Jolteon a, a lightning type, and Vaporeon a water type. And that allows your Vespacoin and your Zorark to become any type that you want. Um, if you can hit your opponent for weakness. So if you're fighting anything that's weak to either fire, lightning, water, uh, grass, or dark, you can actually hit them for weakness with this deck, and that's what's so great. Now, sometimes the evolutions uh, won't come in handy. You'll just be against somebody who's weak against fighting or something, and then be just nothing. But um, even if they aren't, you can just discard them. I feel like Vespaquin is one of the perfect decks to run evolutions in because... Even if you do have a weakness, anyways, the other ones have to go down, and if they if you don't hit for any weaknesses, they all have to go down. And what's the perfect deck to put Pokemons that you're going to discard either way in Vespaquin? So if you're not going to use them, just discard them. You're all good. And we're running two EVs because we don't have space to run all of these to make sure they're not prized. So maybe sometimes we will need Jolteon, but it'll be prized. The e Eevee will know that he's necessary in every single case that um their weak event that the uh, opponent is weak for one of these three types. So it's worth running two of them. 
And then, once again, if you only need one, you'll just discard the other one. Now for trainers. We're going to start with supporters. They're not in this order in the deck list, but I like to talk about them. Uh, for Sycamore, one end. This is what I generally run in a Vespaquin deck because it's an aggressive deck. You want to be discarding cards. Um, and is always helpful. You know, if your opponent's winning, he has one prize. It can really help you out. Or if you don't want to discard a double colorless energy. But, um, but Sycamore is, where, is the one to play here. We're playing one Kukui because... Both for Zorak and for Vespaquin, it's useful. As I said, 160 with Zorak, that would allow you to one-shot an EX. If, you know, he has a full bench, then you can play the Kukui and actually one-shot an EX. So that is pretty nice. And Vespaquin, same thing. I talked about this in my Yan Mega Vespaquin video for the the link for which will be in the description. Vespaquin is a Pokemon where every single damage counts. And um, so we want... Sometimes you'll just be on the verge of knocking out somebody, and we're running, Kuk and that's why we're running Kukui. Um, two Lysander, because Lysander's Lysander. Two One Hex, because it can just really help you out. Then two Forests, because Vespaquin's the only one that can use Forest, but every once in a while, it will be useful. We're running four versus Seekers, of course. Look at how our supporters. Everybody needs four versus Seekers. Allows us to get the end Kukui and Hex Maniac when we need them. Also Lysander, so that's where that is. Ultra Ball, because Ultra Ball's played in all decks. We're running four of them, um, but particularly in this deck, it's the perfect occasion to discard, you know, the Zoraks you're not going to use, the Taurus if you're not going to play it, the Evolutions you never use, etc. Just great card to have, especially in this deck. Of course, we're running it. Then, two special charges. Now, I'm going to show you over here, we're running four Double Colorless Energy. Double Colorless Energy being a special energy, we can unfortunately only run four of them, so we need to run ways to get them back, because otherwise we won't be able to attack all game long. Um, assuming that we will attack with one prize attackers all game, we're going to need a total of six double colorless energies. And if we ran only one special charge, that would be four double colorless energies plus one special charge would be six double colorless energies total. And that seems a, just a little bit, um, it's, it's the perfect number, right? But it seems a little bit risky to me because if you need an Ultra Ball, if you need a Sycamore, and boom, now you can't attack anymore um, all with all six of your attackers. So having two special charges really allows you to have the opportunity to, you know, retreat with a double color, you're unknown with a double colorless or something like that. Uh, we're running four Acrobikes. Acrobike allows you to look, Acrobike allows you to look at the top two cards of your deck and um, discard one, take the other. That's a card that just helps in consistency. But in this deck, particularly if one of the two cards is a Pokemon, well, perfect opportunity to discard Pokemons. And then we're running one Rescue Stretcher. Rescue Stretcher, we're generally not really going to use it for his second effect, which is to uh, shuffle three Pokemons from your discard pile into your deck, because that just weakens Vespaquin. But we're generally just going to use them for his first eff uh, um, effect, which is um, to put one Pokemon from your discard pile straight into your hand. can help you with Vespaquin, but since we're not only running Grass Pokemons, we're not going to run the Revitalizer. We might need the Evolution that we might have discarded early on in the game. We might need a Zorak, and sometimes we might just need an Unknown to draw more, so... Uh, it can it can just really help to have that rescue stretcher there. Um, what are we missing? Yes, two choice band. Two choice band is the same idea as Kukui. You know, sometimes that that is just on the verge. Same thing for Zorak. You might need it every once in a while. Great card to have. Two float stones because of the Zorak. I explained it a second ago. Um, you know, it helps you to go up and then back if they try to Lysander up Taurus or anything to stall you. And then four double colorless energy we already talked about. So um, that is the deck review. I hope you liked it. If you want to build the deck, build it. Try it. Maybe change some things. Tell me in the comments what you liked, what you disliked about the deck. And, you know, like if you liked, subscribe if you want to, and have a good day.